Welcome to Not Like This. Not Like This. From professional wrestling, horror films, and everything in between. Strap in. And now your hosts, Dale Zawada and Jim Snedeker Jr. So last week on Raw, they had uh, Stone Cold via Skype. And I, I guess people liked it, or they liked doing it, because they're doing it again. But it's not Stone Cold. This week, Skyping in Booker T. Booker Suckle. T. You can, now, you can get Booker T. Like he's already on he's already on their shows. Oh yeah, he's already like, like, why is he he's on the payroll. Get your, right? ass, get your ass to work. <laughs> he already Skype works there, in. isn't he? So if we have a meeting at four, can I just Skype in for that? No, Booker. You're on the roster. You gotta be in Tulsa. If you wanna just do a little bit of work and Skype into the office, give me a hell yeah. I can't do that. I got a show coming up Saturday. Ooh, ooh. A show sure. coming up Saturday. At Beer Geeks in Highland, Indiana, eight o'clock. Come see us on Saturday. This show that we had on Friday, the Dad Bod Show, Facebook.com slash Dad Bod Live. That Bod? show was really fun. I had a great time. Thank you for coming. Dale was there. It was fun to experience. A lot of yeah, people yeah. were there. Mason, Bobby. Charlie. Charlie was there. Charlie was there. My not friend, Katie. Right? Old yeah. Kate. Every everybody was there. Old Fucking f- Scott fuck you, was Kate. there. Scott from Bold Hearts. Scott. I got to see and Scott. meet Scott. You got to meet him. He's real. <laughs> no, I would say that that way, but Scott. He got he to meet there. you. He was like, Oh yeah, you're the guy that just talks about Halloween and wrestling all the time. That's me. And I was wearing the appro- an appropriate shirt. Fucking Horror shirts. It's fun. It was a um, great it was, it was show. A good show. It was a really good show. You know what I, I like I, about I these shows? Uh, the we ended people. at like 10 o'clock. We would have ended a little later, but we had a technical difficulty, so we ended on time. Oh, shit. Right at 10. We packed up, and then I had a bunch of friends still there. So I just hung out until like midnight. Yeah, that place will get you, too. And then I went home. Like, just hang out. Just hang out. And I got home at like, you know, 1 o'clock instead of 7 or 5 in the morning or whatever, you know? Mm, like the old days. Like the old days. It was nice. It was fun. It's laid back. No wrestling was on. Yeah, no wrestling this time. I thought they might have had the Bears game because it was preseason, but they didn't even have that. They were showing Ash versus the Evil Dead. It which was is, freaking uh, out Scott. He's like, what is what are, what are they putting on the TV here? I feel this like this is weird. This is like something you talk about on your show. It was pretty gory, and uh, there's some titties. I saw some titties, and I was like, oh, shit, well, be careful. There's babies in here. Yeah. <laughs> he was telling his brother, he's like, hey, if you want to hear guys talk about Friday the 13th for an hour, you should listen to their podcast. I'm like, it doesn't happen every time. Yeah, well, self-fulfilling prophecy right there, you know. But, yeah, good good show. Uh, the little baby was the headline. It stole, stole all the attention from the band. Yeah. Just little baby, cute little baby. Justin's little baby was there. His wife. I don't know if he wants me saying their names, so I'm not gonna. Yeah, say I, I avoided that, but the, you know, whatever. Um, I like the little uh, earmuffs for the babies. That was clever. You're in a, a, a loud place. It's like we're we gonna protect your ears, little baby. I kind of thought it was gonna be a we'll hang out till you start, and instead they had earmuffs for the baby, and baby got to be there the whole time. Baby was cool. Baby wasn't freaking out. Baby was like, this is it. I thought we were going to party tonight. All right. Yeah. Fine. My mom held the baby for about two hours. <laughs> yes, this is true. Yeah, it was a good show. I had like at least 10 people that I knew there. It was fantastic. You should, did you let management know? Like, hey, head count. Oh, they, that's me. Oh, they know. Oh, they know. Yeah, I was like the I was like the fucking uh, manager, like at, at the table, just like I was like, "Hey, plug the Facebook." <laughs> this Whatever is a good time do. to plug that Facebook. Don't plug the restaurants. I hate it when you plug the restaurants. What is that from? I don't know. The Planet Hollywood. The new. We have so many, and they're opening a new Planet Hollywood. 
It's from Last Action Hero. Last Action Hero. At the premiere. Maria's like, whatever you do, don't plug the restaurants. I hate it when you plug the restaurants. Wow, what a weird little We're we actually thing. opening another Planet Hollywood. <laughs> it's yeah, that hilarious. might be a movie we do for the Patreon. I hope so. I It's in consideration. It's just not high on my list because of that runtime. It's so, it's over two hours. No, it isn't. It is. Let, I have the DVD. Let me grab the I'm grabbing on. the DVD. 90, I bet Standing. it's 97 minutes. I'm walking. I'm blown up already. <laughs> Over two hours. You know what? Sometimes it feels like 130 it. minutes. What the? Are you fucking kidding me? 130 Are you looking minutes. at like the director's cut? No. Is that like the TV edit that's stretched to with, fill a two hour window? Yeah. The fuck? I don't yes. know about that. That might be a spe- that might be a special tier for that, <laughs> that one on Patreon. Last episode special. <laughs> Holy moly! But thank you sincerely to everyone that came out. I appreciate it, even though Katie's not my friend. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. See, Dad, Bob, when you can, it's a good time. It's a good time. I drank the beers that I wanted to drink. I ate the food that I wanted to eat. It was just. It was- <laughs> I'm cutting a promo on my good hey, time. What are you doing? Yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> happening here. I drank what I want to drink. I eat what I want to eat. And no one is going to tell me what I can eat and drink. I wanted a taco. <laughs> Last time I was at 350 Brewing, I wanted some beer nuts. Tater tots. Hush puppies. Whatever uh. those things were you got before. Dough oh nuggets? I think they were dough nuggets. Yeah. yeah. So I have the NFL network? No, the WWE network. Yes, I have. yes, yes. And I just can't other stop one. watching old shit. I just I just go down the, the rabbit hole here, and it's in HD, and I'm like, this is a much better rabbit hole. You were scaring me, too, because you were watching it all night yesterday, and I'm like, am I supposed to be watching this for an episode? <laughs> You're just like, I'm watching all the Bash at the Beaches in a row. <laughs> I did. 99, 2000. <laughs> and then you would hit me I with some. did. You'd hit me with some lines like, hey, remember that one good Chavo match? <laughs> hey, you remember that one good Conan match? They don't have them. Yeah, and then you sucked. threw me oh, for a leap because I was like, Max Moon? I don't know. What's going on? And fucking Renegade got to see Renegade at one of those pay per views. Jesus hell, like it's it was just such a mean, blatant ripoff. It's like how you can't do that. You can't do that. They do. Oh, they all do it all the time. Fuck. Name another instance when they did. Well, besides like fake Goldberg, fake Razor Ramon. When did what did they do? He had well according according to. The WWF people, because he has a goatee and he's bald and dressed in black. It's a Stone Cold ripoff. No, I never bought that. Neither did I. I never bought that. And I was like, what's he supposed to have, pink trunks on? Like, And I hated Goldberg and loved Steve Austin, and I never bought that. It was just like, he's just... They were, like they were not man. even cool. They didn't even look alike. Even, even though they were both... White guys who were bald with goatees dressed in black. They didn't even... You would never get them confused. Yep. They didn't even... Like, they weren't shaped the same shape. Their faces didn't look the same. They certainly didn't work the microphone the same way. Mm-hmm. And, and apparently Goldberg sells funny, which I'm looking forward to seeing oh, that. Yeah. He, if you punch him, he just shakes his head. I just had to okay. do it in the microphone <laughs> saying it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's something yeah, I, that I remember noticing back in the day, but not not like that it stood out. I just remember I would I remembered him doing it, but I didn't remember that that's the only way he sells a punch ever. Yeah, he always kind of shook it like he was getting spritzed with a water bottle. Like, oh, yeah, fuck. Like you spit in his uh, face or something. Yeah. Oof. That's going to be hilarious to see. Well, at least he's selling. Hey, at least he's selling. It's true. Ultimate Warrior? I don't think he did that. Some Every these... once in a great while, he would have to, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, but 
who was it? I think it was Honky Tonk Man who said that he'd rather wrestle. I don't remember who it was. It was somebody he'd rather wrestle them like every day for 20 minutes forever than wrestle Ultimate Warrior for like a minute because you would get way more hurt in the Ultimate Warrior match. Yeah. He was unsafe. And I, I was saying the other night that he was he was one of those cocaine guys. And you were saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he just he was just crazy and stupid. Yeah, I think I thought he was just bad at his job. So like he would get in front of the camera and sort of like panic. You know? I don't I didn't uh I thought he was like a big health nut guy, you know? Like, I mean, like all... I, I thought the thing was like didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't do drugs. He was just he he was that bad. He was that out of touch with what was good in a promo that he was like, oh, I I just feel it. I just get in this flow state and say the dumbest shit ever. Because that, that was, was his the strategy. Fucking everybody was doing it. It's just like no there's more even questions. Like no judgments. There's that one where Hogan just kind of like backstrokes through at the end of the promo. <laughs> it's like how much. Was there a Terry. better promo tandem back then than than Hogan and Mean Gene? Like that's the no, classic. He, that's the classic. He, yeah, he would he would encourage and poke just enough, and it was great. He and he would set you up, and sometimes he would just fucking dunk on you though. Up in the ionosphere, brother. Stratosphere. What was that one? Where he, uh, that was the Macho Man one, wasn't it? They were both there, so. and he's talking about all the all the layers of the ozone they're taking us to. Um, apparently, Mean Gene didn't like doing interviews with Macho Man. Like it was one of his well, le- his least favorite was War. Everyone's least favorite. Everything was always Warrior. Mm-hmm. But but Macho Man because he was too unpredictable yes, and yes, physical. <laughs> That and just whooped. you remember the, the cream of the crop and you remember this fucking ridiculous shit he would do. Of course. Uh, I don't know. I yeah, I don't know. I would think he'd have fun with that. Like this is gonna be. He hated it apparently. That that wasn't fun event. for him. Like <laughs> not like, knowing what the guy. fuck <laughs> Macho Man's <laughs> gonna do. Guy. Like he wanted to like get in, get out. You know, because they would have to do. <clears throat> I was I was listening to a podcast where they're talking about it and you'd have to do like you know a million promos in a day because it would be like uh that's right this weekend in atlanta georgia blah 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 and they'd have to do it for like every fucking town coming up yep so i don't think he's i don't think he liked like a 14 take macho man promo (laughs) you know it would be hilarious to see because it's like it's like this the same promo fourteen times, right? We're just gonna say the yeah. different name of the city. I'd love to see the evolution of the promo because you know you you've mastered it by the the last take. You know you really find your groove. That I'd love to see just the stretch of those in a row. Yeah, I would love to get my hands on that tape archive. You know they got them all. Mm-hmm. I've thought that That's too. There, there's a Metallica documentary from the early '90s. That's like. It's called A Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica. And the total, it's a two-part thing. So, like, the total running time for the whole thing is probably, like, three hours. And they shot footage for a year and a half, like, every day, all day. It's a lot. God, I just, like, get my hands on some of the shit shit there, like, that never can see the light of day. Mm -hmm. And not even, like, the obvious... Uh, you know, cocaine rock star stuff. Just like Lars not being able to play an easy part for like a whole day, and them being like, "Lars, what the fuck?" Because <laughs> they even Lars. they have some of that in the documentary, but you knew it was like it's just a snippet. It took him like six months to record the drums and like four months to do everything else, like finish all the other parts and mix it and master it and press it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> really slowing things down, <laughs> Lars. It took him a, almost an entire year to record the Black Album and cost a million dollars to make. And back then, 1990, when you're just this metal band, like the biggest metal band in the world, but, you know, you're not Michael Jackson. You're Metallica. And you're like, yes, it's going to, it's going to, 
We're going to be in the studio a while, guys. This could cost upwards of a million dollars to make. Like, that's fucking that's... crazy. They probably made Ride the Lightning for like $4,000. That's another one of their albums. I'm sorry. That's... I didn't mean so is he, is, is he a bad drummer? Is that how that works? Um, is he known as this? Yeah, he's yeah okay. That's a, that's a better way to put it. Yes, he's known as that. <laughs> uh, is that the Napster guy? Yeah, that's the Napster one. That's the Napster guy. He's known as that, and uh, it's sort of like noticeable how solid the drums are on the Black album. Like they actually sound pretty good. And like, yeah, it took us six months to make <laughs> to record them. <laughs> He comes up with like cool parts because he'll come up with shit that doesn't make sense. And not in like a crazy I know all the music theory so I know everything way, just like a well no one would ever do that. Like Why when you're playing Overwatch that? and you're like well Anna wouldn't just run all the way over to our back line and start shooting us. Yeah. So you don't even think to look for that like that kind of stuff. He's out there. He is out But he's got his own Lars little flavor to him. You know, good, good, bad, or indifferent, it sound, it doesn't, it wouldn't sound like, it, you know what, it doesn't sound like Metallica with other drummers because he got hurt before and they were playing some festival and they kept having all these famous drummers sit in. Yeah, and they were playing drums like human beings. Well, you would, like, nah, that's but not you would, you would think like, oh, well, I, that was probably awesome, right? Like, it's what everyone keeps, they make fun of Lars for being bad. But it just didn't feel like Metallica. It just didn't sound right away like that didn't sound the same. That's kind of a cool thing when a guy gets hurt and they're like, all right, let's bring in some guys. Especially like when you're the the cream of the crop. It's like you can bring in not the big time. Like that's probably a pretty interesting stretch. For that band's, you know, timeline. Yeah, the two that I remember that stand out, well, but the two that the names that I can remember, like was Joey Jordison from Slipknot and uh, Dave Lombardo from Slayer. So that was cool. Because what's his name, Dave Grohl? He feels like a guy that's like I've sat in with everyone. Because why not? I'm a likable guy. Yeah, Let's he certainly you. has. Yeah, he did. Like, isn't, like, like, isn't that essentially like his gimmick? Like, isn't that what he's known for these days? Just being, just being that drum guy. Yeah. Well, he playing, he playing played drums real fucking good. Played drums for Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. The band ended abruptly. Then he was playing drums for Tom Petty. Like he oh. did a show on SNL where he played drums for Tom Petty. Then like the Foo Fighters album, he recorded in like a day. In someone's like little shitty studio, and uh, that was, but it was really good, and it got released. And then he was like, "Do I join Tom Petty's band or I do this Foo Fighters thing?" And he did the Foo Fighters thing. I think it worked out in the long run for him. I think so. And then he did he he did an album with Queens of the Stone Age, and I think he toured with them. He played drums on Tenacious D albums, and. I don't know that he toured with Tenacious D, but he definitely sat in on at, during some shows. And I think they're on tour now with the Foo Fighters. So I'm sure he comes out and plays drums with Tenacious D. That's probably a really good time. I, that it's got to be. It's got to be. He was in the he was in the Pick of Destiny. He was he was Lucifer at the end. Beelzebub. Oh shit. Yeah. Because I'll tell you why he was in that. Because when their first album came out in the, you know, he played drums on it, but in the video for tribute, the demon in that song, he plays the demon in the music video. Mm -hmm. So then when they did a, the movie, the pick of destiny, and that actually happens at the end of the movie. And that's what they write the song about at the very end. He plays Satan. And then he has a drum off with them and, like a rock off. So, uh, yeah. That sounds great. What a great movie that I don't think I've ever seen. I'm sure I've seen bits. I've seen that scene. I love Tenacious. I, I, I love 
Tenacious D. Love, love, love them from the bottom of my heart. I've only seen that movie a couple times. Yeah. I like Jack Black now. Like at like high school times, I thought he was a, I thought that whole thing was a bit much. But in retrospect, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's just enjoyable. I started it's liking him around high school time when I realized like, holy shit, he's a legit, really, really awesome singer. You know, that that's all that's that's what makes Tenacious D work is they're good. Yeah, they're legit. They're legit. And they're just doing it for a laugh. And that it's fun. But in an interview, Jack Black said, But but really we're not doing it for a laugh. Like that's how we approach it. We approach it like we're really trying to be rock gods because that but that's what makes it work. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Dip yep. dip dip. Yep. Jack Black has a YouTube page now. This has been happening for the last couple months where it's just like him and his kids dicking around. And it's fun. It's just fun. I just watch it being like, man, being rich looks like a great time. (laughs) That's why I hate watching channels like that. (laughs) Just looks fun. He's, uh, that's gotta be easy money, right? If you're, if you're super, super famous, you just start a YouTube channel and like, you're going to automatically get a million subscribers. I don't even think he has ad revenue on. Like, once oh, again, no. He's, he's, he's doing he's it just doing, to be nice. That's He's doing some weird Jack Black shit. the worst. <laughs> Quit being nice about it. I hate when I, I watch, awesome. like, I'll, I'll find a YouTube guy, and it's not like a a famous guitarist, and it's not like a professional guitarist. It's just like a weekend warrior guy, but he clearly has a good job. He's just like, yeah, I'm just reviewing this awesome guitar you'll never see. You can't afford to look at it in person. I just, you know, picked one up. I'm just like you. Like, <laughs> no, no, you're not. I just got this $4,000 amp. I'm just plugging in just a regular schmo like you. Just plugging into here. <laughs> <laughs> just like you. Yeah. I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh. And then they're always worse than me. That makes it the worst. Mm. Maybe not always, but most of the time. It's like, well, you yeah. went to med school instead of playing guitar. Just just like you. Just, <laughs> I'm just a nuclear engineer just like you. <laughs> <laughs> playing through my priceless <laughs> amp collection. There's literally this guy on YouTube that he has a 1959 Les Paul, which that means nothing to most of you listening. But... uh. If you have one of those, you're talking a beat up, beat to shit. It doesn't have all the original parts on it. You're looking at a three hundred thousand dollar guitar, like the super duper nice ones that are left. They could go for three quarters of a million dollars. And this guy is just just a guy. He just he bought one like way back when it was worth like maybe two thousand dollars. Just hung on to it his whole life. Now he's like, yeah, this is a 1959 Les Paul in my hands. Here it is. Just like you. Just like you. (laughs) Oh, God. Eric Clapton uh, had a guitar that sold at auction (laughs) for for $4 million. Hmm, that's a lot. Four million dollars. And um Who's buying that shit? Oh, some super fan, you know, day trader guy, I guess. In and, and, and here's like the Jack Black thing. All that money goes to charity. He's Sarah Clapton. He doesn't need four million dollars. Yeah. Four million dollars. So um Oh wait. Wait, there's it, more. Had, it had already sold at auction before for a million. <laughs> How many millions of dollars is this strat gonna sell for? Just training around. Maybe I'm wrong. Is it was it David Gilmore's strat that sold for four million dollars from Pink Floyd? He's the guy from Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> it was did. that guy. What the fuck? Was that? Yeah, it sold for uh it had a pre-sale estimate of ten to twenty thousand uh, dollars, and it reached three million 
$975,000. Fuck. So this, close. We're talking like a $100 guitar brand new back then. But it's Damn. about, you know, David Gilmore played it. it. David Gilmore. Played that shit. He played it, wrote shit on it. Do musicians have custom made instruments oh. or do they just use well known the, top well, of the line okay. kind of shit? Well, both. But yes, they do have custom made instruments. It's a big market and it's a big selling point for the brand. So let's say uh you're a guitar player mm-hmm. and you end up in a famous band. Um you're going to be uh, an endorser of a brand. They're all going to come to you and want to do a deal with you, right? And you're going to say, well, here, I want a guitar. It'll probably, it goes like something like this. There'll be a guitar that you came up playing that you like. And maybe that same brand or maybe a different brand will want to make you a guitar that's like that, but exactly how you want it and all tricked out and everything. And they'll have like a real high end, you know, Two, three, four thousand dollar signature model. But then they'll have like a one thousand dollar, a f- more affordable model. Ooh. And you're just trying to draw people to that brand. But there are people that only play like old vintage stuff. You know, stuff mm-hmm. that when it was new was not custom and was not fancy. Just out of the fucking warehouse. Here you go. Yeah. This guitar player, Joe Bonamassa, uh, the, when the Flying V guitar came out, it came out in 1958, and they didn't make a lot of them because nobody bought them because they thought it looked fucking stupid. It was like Back to the Future shit. They're like, what is this? And now everyone's like, they're the best. Um, he bought one and found the original store that sold it brand new in 1958 and brought it to that store, and they like looked up their sales records and shit and found a picture of their dad from 1958, like, holding this guitar. And it had, like, this weird anomaly, like, this one piece on it looked like it wasn't original, and it turns out it was. They are just like, fuck it, just put that red thing on there. Ship it off that way. Fuck it. Yeah, so just from the warehouse. Nuts. It is pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's that got to be a perk. Of being oh, a yeah. Mom. Well-known musician. It's like it's, all the toys, all the toys. What's fun is as you go down the ranks and you get to somebody like maybe they were more famous in the 80s. Now they're still doing it for a living, but they're not as famous. And they got like Brand X. And like oh. the, their super signature custom one is made in Indonesia like yours is. And you're like, yeah. And they probably Just give like them like you. two guitars a year. Like, yeah, well, you know, you're not moving a lot of units. Got to move the units. There's like the endorsement. Yeah, I never of that. There's like the endorsement whore guitar players too that were like every couple of maybe every year, every two years. Like, oh, now they're with this brand. Oh, now we're, there's just like it's just a business move for them. But then there are people that have just been with the same brand for thirty years or something. What would you do? Who do you want to come to you? Uh... You know, it's a good question. Thank you. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. I I've th- I mean, I thought about it when I was a kid, and I had opinions back then, or, you know, when I was a teenager, early 20s or whatever. And it's always just like Candyland fantasy bullshit. Um, But, like, nobody in particular, I like all kinds of different guitars and everything, and it would... You know, like I like Fenders, but they're I hear their endorsement deal's not that good. <laughs> Always working. No, seriously, I hear like uh that they give you so certain brands would just you know, if you were like a, a, one of their top uh endorsers because you're endorsing the brand, they're the endorsee, which are the brand. It's hard to keep that straight. Um uh, uh, for example, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Back in the 80s, early 90s, he was like one of the top metal guitar player guys. He was with Jackson Guitars that whole time. And it would just be like, yeah, I need uh, a couple of those and one of those and a couple of these. I'm going on tour. Yeah, whatever, Dave. Sure, you're the best. And they were like a smaller company. I mean, they they were f- popular, 
but they weren't like part of some giant corporation conglomerate of musical instruments. Well, then Fender bought them in 2002, and they're like, "Well, uh, we own Jackson now, so you're, yeah, we know you're Dave, we know you're Dave Mustaine, pal, but uh, we're gonna give you the same two guitars a year deal everyone gets." And he's like, mm, "I'm gonna have to go fuck yourself on that one." <laughs> And he was like, he was like, anybody else? Anybody else? ESP guitars? Okay, let's do it. And then that lasted for a while. And he's like, oh, Dean? Dean guitars? Yeah, come on over. He's just, whatever. Let's do it. Do it up, right? Do the deal. Fuck you, pay me. You know what sucks, though? It's like, man, I miss him playing Jackson guitars. You get that, you get like an image in your head of, of that guy playing that guitar. And that's what all your favorite records were made with and all that stuff. And he's like three brands away from that guitar now. And I'm like, why don't you go back to it? For a guitar player, Dale, it's a weird feeling. I remember, um, so Dimebag Daryl used to play Dean guitars coming up from when he was a kid to like the early 90s. And they were not doing hot and Dean guitars like was out of business, but he still had a bunch and was playing them. He never had like an official deal. Just Uh, liked them. He loved him. And he was like, they were working on bringing the brand back, and then they never really did. So then he jumped to Washburn Guitars, who are they're from Illinois. And uh, they made a model that looked like his Dean guitars, and he was with them for 10 years. All different kinds of Washburn guitars and stuff. Uh, then he went back to, then Dean came back, like in a big way in the late 90s. Like they were coming back, coming back. Early 2000s, things are turning around and his deal expired in 2004 and he went back to Dean guitars. And it was like, for me, for like a metal guitar player guy, it's all we were talking about. We're like, dimes back with Dean. It's crazy to see him. You know, he's playing Dean's again. And then he died mm-hmm. like right after that, like months after that is when he got murdered. But I'm looking at a dime signature Dean guitar right in front of me in my living room. And it was cool that he went back with the brand that he started with. And then he loved. And they sold a shit ton of guitars. Especially, you know, obviously because he died. That unfortunately helped their business, which is a bummer. Yeah. But it was a weird feeling. It'd be like, um, it was almost like when a wrestler would go back to the place they started. You know, like maybe somebody left and goes to WCW, and then they come back. You know, like, Hogan's back in W, you know. Yeah. It was that flare. type of, yeah, Flair. Oh, Jesus. It's not fair to Flair. <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't bore you with a lot of wrestling talk today, but Dale, oh, damn. Dale goaded me into boring you about guitars. But I love them. Yeah. I love and to I, play them. I, 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 I like to look play. at them. I like to kiss them. I He's like to, a guitar man. I like to play with him. So I'm watching King of the Ring 93. It's the inaugural tournament. Yeah. Bret, Bret Hart in the finals. Bam Bam Bigelow in the finals. Great fucking little story in the tournament. Bret, every match in, in the tournament, Bret is working his ass off. They're like 20-minute matches. Bam Bam's just steamrolling f- fools. Eight-minute tops. Eight well, minutes. So, Brett's getting injured every fucking match. He's like, "Well, now his knee hurts. Well, now his, his shoulder." So they get they get to the finals, and it's just like, "Oh fuck!" And they, and they do exactly how it, it, it should be done. Bam! Just like I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you because you're weak. And Brett's just selling like crazy. It's it, it's just an amazing it's an amazing little fucking match because Bam Bam was good. Yeah, and you, if you yeah. got you got Brett you got Brett in there too. That's that's just a nice one. And they get to do the giant killer thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe in that tournament, Brett wrestles Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig, at some point. Yes. Yeah, see, I, I I turned it on, and I, I took a shower, and I came back, and a lot, a lot had happened. Uh, one thing that was still going on when I returned was Macho Man on commentary. <laughs> and God damn. I was like, oh, we're at, we're at this era. So this is something. <sighs> Hogan wins at WrestleMania 9. Brett's pissed. And they sort of like throw this whole like Brett, this tournament's all going to be about you, buddy. 
You're gonna win. Are. You're gonna be the king of the ring. That's, I mean, that's what? almost like being the champ again. <laughs> What's the story? What's the background of it? Uh, well, Remember? Hogan Hogan wins at WrestleMania nine. He beats yes Yokozuna, who just beat Brett, and uh, Hogan loses at King of the Ring ninety three. That's where he loses to Yokozuna, and then see you later. But they're like, well, Brett, we'll we'll make the tournament all about you, and you're gonna win the whole tournament, and you're gonna look good, and you're gonna look good in every match, and get to do all your shit. You get all your shit in. You're gonna win it, and we're gonna crown you. You're gonna have a fucking crown. You're the king of the ring, isn't that like? That's almost like uh, we didn't give Hogan the title and didn't give you guys a match together. It's almost like it's almost as good as that, right? But then at the end, Jerry Lawler comes out and beats the ever loving fuck out of him. Yeah, well, they're like, setting it up. How, that's how they fade to black. He comes out. Cuts a little promo and Brett's fucking hilarious. He's just like, Where the fuck were you all night? Like, now <laughs> you're going to be coming out here giving people shit. <laughs> it was great. It was great. And then he has the fucking stupid Burger King. I think you're the Burger King. And, you know, I'm putting over that, this brand. Yeah. That probably yeah. didn't pay shit to do that. Yeah. And he gets the chant going, Burger King. And, you know, Vince is like, Stop it. Damn they it. should be paying us every second they say that. I'm going to be king of the Whoppers. And then what happened, Dale? Then where did that angle? Where was it supposed to blow off? Do you remember the big blow I, off to that? I, I don't remember. I know the family gets involved. I know there's some feet. I know there's a suck on my toes match. There, the big blow off to that was supposed to be Survivor Series 1993. It was going to be Jerry Lawler and his executioners or his horsemen or the what, what were they? The Royal the Knights, Guard. The Knights. And the his Knights, Knights were going to wrestle Bret Hart and his brothers. But then right before that, he got to go deal with some legal things. So they put Shawn Michaels in there. Fucking Shawn. Shawn mm-hmm. was selling like crazy in this. For for Crush. There's a Shawn Michaels what? crush match. I forgot and about that. Sean I've seen that pay per view five times. I forgot off. that crush was in it. I remember and Bam Bam Razor's in it, isn't he? I think so. But crush, I just wish. I hope he knew and appreciated what was happening at that moment. That this this the greatest seller to ever sell for, is selling for you. For you, and he's not making a stink about it. He's he's just doing his thing. Well, but isn't he really selling for himself though? Yeah, yeah, he is. It's all about that comeback. When he sold for Hogan, no, I don't think anyone ever sold harder for Hogan ever. Not a, Hogan, not at that level. I love that because he's he's taking the piss out of it. He's overselling and shit because he's mad at Hulk Hogan. But Hulk Hogan's like, this is fine. Yeah, he's like, this is great. Everyone should be doing this for me. I usually wrestle people that can't sell at all. Like yep. when I give you a big boot, I want you to do five backflips. Yes, please. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, if you think about it on paper, psychology wise, that's a weird matchup for Hogan because Hogan's always going up against another huge person. You know, Undertaker, Andre, Earthquake, you know, fucking uh, Sid Justice. He's bigger than Hogan. Macho Shit. Man is like the exception to that as far as like huge matches that Hogan had. But goddamn, that was like the angle of all angles that they had. Yep. Um, yep but yep. yeah, Shawn Michaels is like, yeah, you should just like stomp a mud hole in him. Like he should be selling like that. It's Hogan. I guess like Hogan, supposedly there were plans for him to work with Mr. Perfect and, uh, Ted DiBiase and all when they brought those guys in. But I guess Vince just like, no, we got to get a big motherfucker in there. Hogan's got to destroy a giant. Let's get Zeus. (laughs) (laughs) Who's big boss, man? Now he, he would sell. He could sell. He was, he was, he was, he could be. There were times he was just like a little too wild. He would hit like the ropes a little too hard and like 
go through him. Like it was always some shit that would go wrong because he was going a little too hard. <laughs> he's huge. He's fucking. He was a. He was. He's like fucking, fucking three hundred and fifty pounds or something. He was gigantic, <laughs> and he was taller than Hogan. He was a massive individual. Yeah, that blue really fooled you. <laughs> he was. He was. He was. He was a giant. He was a big dude. Oh man, he had that big old gut. When it, when he first came, he had that blue, he had that big old gut. Then he lost some weight, and they're like, "Yeah, he's the same." Yeah, but they didn't change the shirt, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> I remember like he sweat through that shirt. motherfucker instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Did we talk on the show about how you remember nails, right? When they turned, this was a little bit after they turned Big Boss Man Babyface. He faces nails, this inmate who supposedly Big Boss Man had abused when he was a prison guard. He, he you know, beat him and treated him poorly, so that's why there's yeah. this heat. Like, kind of makes sense. And then Nails, at the, after a show, um, like, was physically uh, working over Vince McMahon for money, for, like, extra money. And then, then he called the police and said that Vince McMahon, like, molested him, like, tried molested to... Him. Like grab yeah. his dick, or <laughs> I've heard the story. I've heard this story. Can you imagine that shit? You go beat God. someone up for extra money, and then you hurry up and call the cops. Like you tried to rape me. <laughs> How could he rape nails? The guy was gigantic. <laughs> he forced himself upon me, officer. I call. No, don't you call the cops. I already called him for Vince trying to rape me. <laughs> what? <laughs> And that Vince was like Twink Vince. That wasn't fucking bodybuilder Vince, too. No. He was probably on the way up there, but he wasn't quite there yet at all. Yeah, that was still that was still look at that maneuver, Vince. What a maneuver. Nails. What a fucking what a, perfect, what a perfect fucking gimmick though. It's like we have this cop gimmick. What else can we oh yeah, it didn't quite work out for them though. Like they they could have brought in the ward in, they could they really could have uh, branched out with this lore. They're so close, man. So close. Do you think they could still do that today? Not like the occupation thing, but <sighs> tie something in with Boss Man and that legacy. Oh, that's not where I thought you were going. <laughs> what did you? Where did you? What? what did no, you I, I thought you were. You said I. I thought you were doing doing the occupation route and then you said not an no. occupation but and I'm like where is this going and then you're but like in that universe can you go to that specific universe like oh like back to nails. cop <laughs> back to Cobb County Georgia yes I mean they do that with actual sons of wrestlers and it doesn't really work that's true you know Curtis Axel and I don't know I'm sure there's Bobby Rue I'm gonna be his fictional son it's what he always wanted. <laughs> I mean, they could, but I don't know why they would. It's weird. You- it was a weird time, man. There was a lot of weird. It was like it was like characters. It was comic book like, character time. Like, what's the opposite of doink? What's the opposite of a clown? IRS. Like- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they Super did that serious. Too. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, Good. pay your taxes. We did they? Yeah, I, IRS I, I, was there. No, no, no. Did they feud? Mm, 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 mm. No, I don't think they so. crossed paths. Maybe once or twice. Because, like, that's why. Um, Sounds like a main event at Superstars. The 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 Gar- the Garvins, the Slop Drop guys, those hillbillies. <laughs> what the fuck were their names? The Godwins. The Godwins. The that's hog why farmers. The God- with the Godwins crossed uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the fancy boy, like that was good. Like that's a good crossover. Did they that. slop him with some pig slop? Oh, so many times. <laughs> so many so times. and they and they would clothesline him into the pen, and he would prat fall into the in the shit and mud, and the pigs would be like, "What the fuck is going on? Why are there so many people here?" And then they had the ringmaster. <sighs> they did have the ringmaster. He's the master of the ring. That was that was the worst. He survived it. God damn right he did. Jesus, he that's an understatement it. of forever. 
like uh, like for, like the ringmaster like that's fucking dean malenko barry horowitz level <laughs> character like he's so fucking lucky to have survived that but he obviously did stone cold steve austin jesus christ the ringmaster Man. i guess he never won a match as the ringmaster that's hilarious yeah. i do like that i do enjoy that because isn't that where he's like well, what the fuck Ted. <laughs> hey, Ted. <laughs> Your fucking belt ain't doing shit, Ted. Yeah. He's, uh, oh, where's, you're the million dollar champion. It's like being the real champion. I'm not bred. I don't fall for that <laughs> shit, Ted. <laughs> and then all it, all it took was King of the Ring 96. Austin 316. Beautiful. God damn. Then the money just kept just started pouring in for t shirts. What Crazy. was uh, the King of the Ring with the, the bad announcer guy? 94. 94. Oh, the wow, so was the second one. So yeah. the second. So you have the first King of the Ring, which amazing event. Give the give that a look on the network. The tournament itself. The tournament. Oh yeah, it's awesome. And then the and the second one, they follow it up with that goober. On commentary, that's a hell of a hell of a thing. Two hundred thirty-five pounds, Art. <laughs> you know what they did in some of the backstage promos, which was super fucking weird, is they would reference the event and year. Like Owen Hart would be like, "You know what? Tonight at King of the Ring '93, I'm gonna beat the shit out of my opponent." And I'm like, "Why did you just call it?" <laughs> King of the Ring 90. Like they they were planning. It's like some UFO ahead. shit. It's like well, one day there's gonna be a network. See <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I didn't even think about that. That went right past me. They did have other King of the Rings that weren't pay-per-views, though. Like a yeah. Hacksaw one. Hacksaw was the King of the Ring in Harley Race. King Harley Race. But it was just like a one-off. It wasn't like a pay-per-view. Vince was like, what do we own? He right. he hated it, apparently. He hates any sort of like he, tournament stuff. Yeah, anything with scoring or... Uh, it's so stupid. Because it's the easiest thing. It's instant engagement. They write themselves half the time. You just got to plug in a few pieces here and there. But then you just brawl you can, for all. And like even like the the early eliminations, you can like branch off some feuds from from there, and stuff, which is great. And but no, I don't like them. I don't like. Turtles. Let's have the guys really fight for real, so we can kill people's careers. What brawl for all? Oh, brawl for all. God damn. Because like, uh, what if they brought that back? What if what if ratings <laughs> got real bad with this AEW war on the horizon, and they're just like MMA's taken over, super popular. Let's do it again. Yeah, I don't they do an MMA one. They won't do like a boxing one. Just do like the gloves are are off. No, they they do more of an MMA one than boxing. Oh God, that'd be amazing. It, it would be terrible. Be amazing, they wouldn't dude. do it. They'd never do it. That was such a Fuck. disaster. There's no way they would do that again. Now I'm just picturing the current roster in a tournament of actual MMA. Like, holy fuck! I, you take Brock out of it. Just take Brock out of it. They, that's what they had to do too. When they, because I think they had Dan Severn was there, and Ken Shamrock was there during that. And they're like, yeah, these fucking guys can't be in brawl for all the fucking kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> They'll murder every one of you. So it was like they're not allowed. But, like, if Xavier Woods went toe-to-toe with Dolph Ziggler, fuck, I'd watch the shit out of that. I'd want. There'd be, I'd definitely tune in to see some people get their ass beat. Because you'd see, like, who's got it. Like, you would just see who's got it. And it's like, all right. Yeah, I think there is so many reasons why they would never, ever do that. Fuck. Uh, not safe. We're, we're, uh, we have a lot more research on punching people in the head. And uh, we have a lot more data about that. And I don't think the guys would want to do it. All my fat guy wrestlers would just eat shit. Like Bray Wyatt versus 
Biggie Langston, like Biggie would just destroy. Well, like, it gosh. like killed Doctor Death's push, didn't it? Like Doctor Death was supposed to be this legit tough guy. Mm-hmm. He got fucked yeah. up by like Bart Gunn or somebody Bart, or JBL. Bart. I don't know. Somebody beat the shit out of him, and that's like, how do you? No one's gonna believe this shit now. And even though you're like, well, wrestling's fake, it still was like, yeah, but he got his ass beat. I can't, I can't get down with that. Like, imagine like tough guy, Stone Cold. You know, imagine him just getting like fucking molly whopped by fucking a Dudley boy or something. A Dudley boy. You'd be like, like, yeah, I know it's all fake and shit, but man, Stone Cold, you got your ass beat. There's always that little. That's just how guys are. Like, there'll there will be that in the back of your mind. You'll always see that person getting knocked the fuck out. You'll be like, yeah, but you got your ass beat. I don't know. Yeah, I know Stunner and all that. And, like, you give me a hell yeah. Like, yeah, that's still cool. It's still cool. It's still cool. Yeah, but, man, you got knocked the fuck out. I saw that shit on TV. <laughs> That's kind of how it is, like, with CM Punk. Like, a lot of yeah. everyone's still, <laughs> if you were on board with CM Punk, you're still on board with CM Punk. But he got his ass beaten. Now he's fucked up. There's fucked gonna up be to no sh- if he ever comes back and wrestles again, for who whomever. I would imagine it's a lot more likely that it would be AEW rather than WWE at this point. But th- th- verbally, you're gonna hear it from people, and every everyone's gonna be um, picturing the times he got the shit beaten out of him. You can't not do it. You can't. So yeah. brawl for all, I don't think it's yeah, going to make a return. Brawl for all. But I, I, oh, an MMA version of take the gloves off. The gloves are off. That's the tagline. Brawl for all two. The gloves are off. <laughs> it, it would be it would be amazing. See, I'm surprised the Saudis aren't on this shit yet. Like here's they're going to be they're going to hear this. Dollars, eight billion dollars, Vince. Have your guys physically kill each other in this octagon here. <laughs> He'd be like, <laughs> like, all right, get on the plane. Guys, it's uh, it's going to be completely voluntary, but if you win, I'm going to give you $100 million. If you lose, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely voluntary. <laughs> it's, uh, th- th- it is going to be the end of Coneheads, essentially. Uh, <laughs> but fucking... <laughs> What was that thing called? The Garth Sock or something? <laughs> Narfle the something Garth Sock? Like- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's gonna be the end of Coneheads. I forgot all about that until you said that shit. Now I can picture all of it. The whole <laughs> scene where he golfs the thing in the throat with a rock. Yep. That he starts singing person. Tainted Love. Sometimes I feel... <laughs> The whole thing is back now vividly. I had wiped that piece of RAM, was cleared off for other <laughs> shit, and you were like, no, no, hey, remember this? Glad to help. Burp, burp, uh, run away. <laughs> but if, but if uh, Brawl for All 2, uh, this time the gloves are off, Undertaker and Goldberg for real this time in Saudi Arabia. Who wins that? That's sad. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Undertaker has always, like, enjoyed MMA. Goldberg, too, though. I think they both, like, casually train in that shit. So, like, it's a toss. They're both old. Yeah. So it's hard to, you can't just be like, well, this guy's way younger and more fit. Maybe Goldberg. Like, Goldberg was a football player too like he was a competitive athlete i don't know see i would i would talk with goldberg beforehand and i would, I would like let's look they, they we're getting paid saudi money i'm not saying let's throw it but let's have a gentleman's agreement to keep this one standing up all right yeah because he's right, kind, you, he you kind of my a legs. monster if, you, if, if we take this to the ground you're you're a fucking bitch bill all right let's just let's just see who's got it up here they used to do that in, M- in mma makers. in ufc they would Guys would be like, we're we're not no wrestling. We we're just gonna beat the shit out of each other. Who was it too? It was uh God, there's a it's famous for this fact, but it was like a like a high level wrestler 
and they had like an agreement beforehand, like he's not going to take him down if you don't kick my legs or something. And the guy threw a leg kick, so he's like instantly taking you down. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think I got that right. I can't remember. Oh, shit. I can't remember. Oh, I did see the fights this Saturday, though. Oh, shit. My boy, yeah, I heard. My guy yeah, DC ahead. lost. Was it bad? He got knocked out, but it was uh, oh, the geez. fourth round. Like, he was winning, I think. I would, I would say he was winning that fight. But he would just walk up, just walk right in Stipe's face with his hands down. And he's Stipe's got had a way bigger reach advantage and everything. But he would just he was lighting Stipe up for a while and but not knocking him out. And then Stipe just knocked him the fuck out. Not out cold. It was a TKO, you know, but it was like it could have been out cold pretty quickly thereafter if it didn't get stopped. But Nate Diaz came back. And he beat Anthony Pettis. And he hadn't fought in three years. And I loved it. I love Nate Diaz. He's awesome. That's the guy that was always getting into it with uh, Conor McGregor, right? Yeah, he choked out Conor in the first fight and then lost a decision in the second fight. But he's like, I didn't lose. Like, he didn't beat me. It's like he didn't didn't tap me out. He didn't knock me out. They just gave him, you know, the, the judges gave him the fight. He never beat me. And then he hadn't had a fight since that, because he's like, "Well, I want, I want money." <laughs> it's like, you know, well, you know what I want? Let's do money. a third one of those and make a bunch of money. And they're like, "How about you fight this guy?" He's like, "How about you go fuck yourself?" They just, he just kept turning down fights for, because he's like, "Who is who? Who am I fighting? Who's this guy?" I'm not just gonna fight a nobody after Conor McGregor. I want to get paid. So he just didn't fight. Just kept training. And then he beat Anthony. Did he get Pettis. paid? Yeah, he was under that contract. Three, that that three year holdout. Oh, okay, I didn't know. I don't know how it fucking works. I don't. I don't know MMA how it works. Fighter. Like, the, like maybe there's a guarantee, like a downside guarantee or something. So he was still getting something, but he he didn't want to take these fights against. He didn't say who it was, who they were offering, but it was like apparently the fucking Mickey Gulls of the yeah, world. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. He was like, I don't think so. I don't think that's gonna work for me, bro. And DC bro. might be done. He's forty. He, I, his last couple fights, it was like, is this his grandpa still going? Like, I, God bless him. He's a big wrestling fan. Seems like a, a nice guy, from what I can tell. And it's just like, are you? Do you be done already, guy? That's good. Steep with guy, one of the greatest of all time. Stepe is the, only the second person that ever beat him. The, yeah. the first being John Jones, arguably the like pound for pound best UFC fighter ever. And was on some picograms, but uh, yeah. So it's not only it's not his second loss; it's his third loss. But two of them, or it was like a loss and a no contest against John Jones because he pissed hot, and then a loss to Stipe. Oh, and he's like, "I'm gonna," too. but he didn't do the like the, "I'm I'm done. I'm retiring tonight." Blah blah blah. He said, "I'm gonna go home and talk with my wife, sit down with my family. We got some decisions to make." But he's like he's good on the mic, you know. He does the oh yeah. He does their he's, interview shows and stuff, or their like uh, commentary shows, their analysis breakdown things. He, he's he does, gonna do some stuff for WWE. Like uh, they want, I think he's he, he actually might be under contract um, for Fox. Like the post, they might do like a post game show, mm-hmm. post SmackDown show, and he's gonna be on it. That would be awesome. Think, yeah, get him, Pat McCaffrey. And somebody else that's good, and that could be a real fun post game show. Somebody who Tony would... Chavo. No, no. The Professor A-W. Mike. T- no. Hmm. Joey Styles. Yeah. That you you did it. I'd love to see Joey Styles back. Oh my god. That's a, that's exactly how he sounded. Did any motherfucker work harder? On the microphone, no, like he was, he was, he was, he was fucking doing promos and shit in Paulie's mom's basement. basement. He's mm-hmm. fucking doing the voiceovers on the shows and shit. He did every fucking thing. He was the only guy. He was just doing all of it all the time. He's the best. Yeah. And apparently, I, a legit oh. badass. He didn't take a lot of guff. Mm-mm. Did not take a lot of guff. Because he knocked someone out, who did he knock out? I don't remember, but I know the I story you're talking about. 
think it was JBL. Slap the shit out of him. It's just that what? JBL, like a fucking tree. Told him to pick a hand. Timbered his ass down. All right, let's plug it up here. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Dale Zawada. Some cool pictures on there. See what I'm up to. Follow me on Instagram at James JR Music. You can also follow my band Dad Bod. On Facebook, facebook.com slash dadbodlive. That's all I have for you as far as those uh, social plugs. And then if you are looking for something to do this Saturday night, come out to Beer Geeks in Highland, Indiana, 8 o'clock. Dad Bod will be playing live. We're playing two special songs just oh. for Jason at Beer Geeks that we've never played before. Just Shit. for Beer Geeks. Exclusive Exclusive content Crazy Cool Check that out This was episode 85 Thanks for listening I'm Beldar Conehead I'm the Garth Flock 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 The Garth Flock